Hello, everyone, and welcome to the second edition of Jock Talk with Brett Hedges. I'm joined in studio today by a good friend of mine, but before we get into that, if you missed last episode, we talked to Toronto Argonauts draft pick and University of Windsor Lancers wide receiver Evan Pashanak, and we talked about his journey uh, throughout sport and uh, how he ended up getting drafted by the CFL. So if you haven't watched that yet, uh, head over to the Nockstrom YouTube page. And you can uh, see my 30-minute in, uh, interview with Evan after that. For those of you who are joining the show for the first time, uh, this is going to be a weekly 30-minute show about the uh, local Windsor Essex sports community and the people that make it the special community that it is. And one of those people that makes the uh, sports community so uh, special here in Windsor is uh, my partner in crime during NBL broadcasts. And uh, he's a huge... Uh, He's a huge NBL fan, uh, color commentator for the Windsor Express this past season, uh, Mitchell Kobe K. Good to see you. Good to see you too, Mitch. Thank you for joining us today. Uh, now, basketball is uh, is our Jones, as we as most people know. It is. We are the color uh, commentator and play-by-play -play announcer, respectively, for the Windsor Express. And what a season it was, Mitch. It was. Uh, it was amazing right up to the finish. Uh, it was quite a journey um, and able to both be a part of that. Uh, that whole ride and, and go with the team through the playoffs and, and to bring that championship home. It was kind of a, a real special uh, moment in my life uh, as a sports, uh, not only as an athlete in, in the past, but as a, a basketball enthusiast uh, today. So it was uh, it was an amazing, uh, amazing journey, as I said. Mm -hmm. Now, Mitchell has another favorite team as well. That's the Oklahoma City Thunder. We're going to be talking about the Oklahoma City Thunder in their series against the San Antonio Spurs later in the show, as well as the NBA uh, draft lottery, how that turned out and how some teams are going to be affected from that. Uh, but a lot of things have been going on in the NBL Canada, Mitch, and that starts with uh, the huge three-year contract that they signed for the TV deal with BN Sports. What are some of the details of that? Do you remember? Um, well, I know it, it, it brings the, uh, the, the, the NBL to, um, I think it was 7 million homes. Uh, and, you know, it just kind of, it, it's a step up in, in terms of exposure for the league. Um, it's going to give Canada a, a greater brand of professional basketball. We're kind of uh, at that place where, you know, there's no ceiling right now. And, and so long as the players continue to deliver, the cities continue to support, uh, we can have a, a real successful league in Canada and, and enjoy another brand of professional basketball. So the sky really is the limit. And this sports deal in particular um, gives everybody an opportunity to know who these teams are, who these players are, and who we are. So uh, it's it's a, certainly a monumental thing that's occurred uh, in the history of the NBL. Absolutely, I agree. From the research that I've done with it, uh, BN Sports has been mostly a uh, a soccer channel, and it took over for Al Jazeera Sports uh, a few years ago. This is their first venture into Canada in uh, professional sports. So we're really glad that uh, the NBL Canada can be a part of that, and it's really special being in Windsor, being the hometown of the championship team, getting into this uh, huge TV deal for them. So it's really exciting for the city of Windsor, and I'm really hoping that the uh, fans can buy in and help uh, help the league grow through its TV deal. Yeah, it's kind of cool that it, it also came on the bootstraps of a, a Windsor championship. Uh, this year, the NBL was somewhat propelled into, uh, you know, we want it to be a mainstream thing. Um, these playoffs, these last playoffs really delivered. Uh, it was exciting basketball Hands and uh, you know, it was just awesome. So uh, they deserve it. The league deserves it. Everybody's shown commitment. Uh, and I think that the, the TV uh, companies and organizations see that. Uh, they see the commitment, they see the effort and they see the growth. So it's a potential for, um, for everybody to, to, to piggyback off in you know to help this league be successful mm -hmm. hopefully uh you and myself could uh hopefully be a part of those broadcasts we'll see there's uh, no details about who or what or when the uh broadcasters or tv crews have been announced so no. we'll uh, keep our ear to the ground on that one and uh we'll hope and pray and maybe we'll get some insider information from bill jones and dart as well as hopefully now <sighs> some changes went around after the uh, around the NBL after the uh, TV deal was made. They made some minor changes to their constitution and one of those went down, uh, one of those big, uh, the big details of that constitution was that they changed the regular season from 40 games to 32 games. What are your thoughts about that, Mitch? 
Um, well, there's logistics that, that we don't see from the outside. Uh, it, it could have to do with, um, with traveling expenses. Uh, there's, there's so much to do with that kind of change, and I don't have that information to give an opinion. I, I would like to see 40 for sure. games because uh, I love the NBL, but for whatever reason, that had to happen, and I'm, I'm just trusting that uh, powers greater than ourselves mm -hmm. that are in charge. Yeah. Uh, did that for a good reason, so uh, it is what it is. I'm still going to enjoy 32 games, mm -hmm. and, uh, and that's it, right? Yeah, um, all the owners must have had uh, a, a majority vote as to whether or not to change from 40 to the 32 games. they I know the one emphasis that they wanted to make was that an emphasis on home games and making them more of an event, whereas if you had two, three home games throughout the week, it'd be tough to get a good crowd for every one of those games. So, And the Windsor Express were victims of that. Sometimes they would have a game on a, three games in one week. And... Uh, you're not going to get the biggest crowds if you if you don't space out your games yeah, well. So. That's a good point, and, and there's a good example, and I didn't think of that right. And that's why they have people that are going to come together off the success from this league and, and look at how to make it better. So the fact that they're making changes is a good thing because, uh, you know what, nothing's perfect. So, yep. I mean, it makes sense, right? Mm -hmm. If you're not growing, you're dying. That's it. So uh, hopefully there's lots of growth and tons of growth to be uh, seen in the National Basketball League of Canada. You might notice that we have some uh, some balloons here in front of us. That's just to signify the uh, launch of uh, Why Not, which is a, uh, it's a youth uh, professional organization that just launched up. I don't know all the details of it, but uh, these balloons are here to uh, signify their uh, beginning as a corporation, and uh, hopefully we have the best of them, and maybe we can get them on one of our shows here on TV. Perhaps uh, maybe Betty Goodell, or maybe even we can go beyond incredible with Ashley and Nicole sometime later. Uh, another one of the big changes that the NBL made was the protected list. They added a player to each protected list, uh, team, each team's protected list, so they can add, uh, they can protect six players to which they can uh, bargain with throughout the regular season to get a deal done and to maintain a core group of their uh, of their team. Uh, what are your thoughts about the increase on the uh, protected list? Uh, I think it keeps it keeps most teams competitive to a degree. Um, it's a it's not a gigantic league in terms of a number of teams, right? We're fairly new. Um, I think uh, given the set of circumstances with um, roster and number of teams in each division, that I think. You know what? It's a good number to roll with, um, and you know they don't want teams tanking, right? We're mm -hmm. we're in the, the beginning stages of a, of a of an important professional basketball league. So at this point in time, I'm gonna I'm gonna go with the fact that I, I agree with it, and mm -hmm. uh, I like the uh, I like the six players so far. Mm -hmm. Something that might affect uh, might interest our Canadian viewers and uh, those around Canada that watch the league is that the they, uh, the league increased the minimum amount of Canadians that you can have on a team, so it's gone up from three to four, which means some really good things for some Canadian players coming out of universities and uh, competitive colleges as well. What are your thoughts about uh, the Canadian content of the league increasing? I think it's awesome. Uh, you know, this is this is Canada, and uh, it's it's our league, and. Um you know, we're going to go abroad and, and, and expand and find players and give players from other places an opportunity to play at a high level of professional basketball. But the fact that we want to keep it Canadian as well just shows, uh, shows commitment to, to the league being in our country. Mm -hmm. So um, I like it. Absolutely. And uh, we're going to go over some of those protected lists from uh, each team across the league. There's nine teams across the league. And we're going to start with uh, some of the Eastern Conference uh, Eastern Atlantic Division teams. And we're going to start with the uh, National Basketball League of Canada runners-up, which is the Island Storm. The Island Storm have protected Nico Corey, Adrian Moss, Antonio Ballard, Jeremy Williams, Dwayne Smith, and Steve Chengang for their team for next season. And that's a pretty solid lineup of uh, guys, Mitch, if you ask me. Yeah, that, that group in particular, those, those are probably the players I would have chosen. Yeah. Uh, they were a finals team. Um, they are very big in the front court. They're keeping that, and they've also got the two guards there. So uh, I didn't expect anything uh, different yeah. from the Storm. For sure, especially after the Storm added Nick Corey late last year from the Mississauga Power. He definitely added a big boost to their game. And, uh, of course, Antonio Ballard's one of their uh, scoring leaders and rebounding leaders, has been in the league for the last two years. 
So uh, it's good to see him getting protected and knowing where he's going to play next year. Uh, Steve Chen Gang, can't say enough about him. Met him at, during the NBL Finals. Uh, native of Cameroon, he's a great, uh, very raw player. Uh, I remember he was telling me that he only played, started playing basketball about eight, ten years ago after wow. he came over uh, from Cameroon to go to uh, the United States. So uh, congratulations to the Island Storm for protecting a good group of guys. We're going to head over to the next group. We're gonna, and which is I'm going to keep over with the Atlantic. Oh, a lot of a lot of good technical uh, difficulties here. We'll have the list up shortly. Here we go. We got the St. John Mill Rats, which were the Atlantic Division champions during the regular season. They had a very solid team, uh, and they were just snake bitten in the first round, I believe, in, in the first round by the uh, Halifax Raymond, who had a really good uh, second half of the regular season, even though their uh, total wins and losses did not signify it. Uh, the St. John Ro Mill Rats. Uh, protected the league MVP in Anthony Anderson. No surprise there. Doug Herring Jr. was another great uh, swingman who ended up playing in the PBL after the season was over. Raheem Singleton, Tyrone Levitt, who was a great, great big man in the league. He's very hard to handle. Eric Crookshanks and Lawrence Wright. So another solid group coming out of St. John and uh, something that their fan base can be really excited about. Uh, headed over to the next one. We'll have the Halifax Raymond, who are the Eastern uh, Atlantic Division finalists. They lost to the Island Storm in a six-game series. They did. Very good team. Very good team. Had a had a slow start out of the gate in the uh, National Basketball League of Canada, uh, but they protected Clifford Clinkscales, Jason Williams, Raven Barber, Tim uh, Payman, who was the lead leader league leader in uh, rebounds over the years. So they got a uh, got to solidify. The big man spot, Alou Famutimi and Chris Matthews. All great players. They're going to contribute a bunch for uh, that team and uh, hopefully give them the best of luck. Uh, next and finally from the Atlantic Division, we're going to talk about the Moncton Miracles. Didn't get to see Moncton too much this year, so I have limited amount of knowledge about their players, but they've protected Trayvon Lathan, protected Trayvon Lathan Stanley Robinson, Johnny Mahan, Oliver McNally, Cordell Gianti, and Alex DeRoche. So congrats to the uh, Moncton Miracles players and looking forward to seeing them next year. Your, any thoughts about the Atlantic Division teams? Um, well, with the six-player spot, I mean, those are, those are your stronger players. I don't think it was too difficult in choosing a majority of those lists. Um, those were kind of the given guys, and uh, I think the team so far, it appears on paper anyway, ha have made the, the correct um, I've cho chosen the correct players to protect. Mm -hmm. So I like what I see so far from each team. Uh, it keeps everybody strong and competitive. Absolutely. Now let's head over to the Ontario side, which was the Central Division. And uh, first and foremost, we're going to start with the London Lightning. And uh, wow, what a team they had this year. Took the Windsor Express to the brink in the semifinals to Game 7. Me and you had the pleasure of calling that game, and they've got an exciting team. They protect Stephen McDowell, Jermaine Johnson, Dwight McCombs, Tony, Be uh, Tony Bennett, no relation to the singer. Uh, Garrett Williamson, who is a great Canadian, and Zane Johnson, a great three-point shooter. Any thoughts about those six players, Mitch? Uh, it's going to keep London competitive. They were coming off uh, two championships. Uh, they took, took Windsor right down to the wire. So uh, looking at that core group of players just really brought me back to the playoffs mm -hmm. and how strong that team is. Uh, almost it, like almost makes me like... A, the <gasps> rivalry with Windsor is pretty cool because they're, they're a neighboring city mm -hmm. and uh, there was some, some drama with their reporter and, and this, oh, this great playoff that? series that took place so i like it um that keeps london strong and in the mix uh, mm -hmm. so yeah and stefan yeah stefan mcdowell missed the playoffs because of a uh, ankle inj uh, yes. heel injury uh so it should be interesting to see how he goes uh how he goes about his training his rehab and hopefully to see him back he's a very exciting player the winner of the volcano award that's right, for the Nokstrom uh, Canadian professional basketball. And I'm sure he'll be fine. London uh, knows a lot more than we do, right? So if they've got him coming back, I'm sure they're, they're taking good care of exactly. him over there, and he will be 100%, no doubt. Exactly. Great organization, the London Lightning. Wish them all the best, and uh, looking forward to seeing them next year. Heading onward, we'll uh, visit 
the Mississauga Powers protected list. Uh, Mississauga had uh, a, a, a difficult year, I'd say. Uh, they went to, uh, they changed cities. They went from Oshawa to M Mississauga. Ended up winning the play-in game against Ottawa and ended up playing the uh, Windsor Express in the first round of the NBL playoffs, or the, the quarterfinal round, we'll call it. Uh, lost three games straight, but a, a lot of really good players. Um, Mark Gamilia was protected, William Bo Harris, Kirk Williams Jr. And one thing I will, uh, four of those six players have been on the Mississauga Power for two, three years now, which, is, which includes Juche Rocket. Morgan Lewis was a former member of the Oshawa Power, so he's familiar with the organization. And of course, Alex Superman Johnson, the rookie sensation, the Canadian rookie sensation, came uh, to the team this year and provided a lot of stability at the point guard spot. Got a lot of uh, stability at the point guard spot. So looking forward to seeing Mississauga and seeing how their franchise grows in the future. Heading forward, we're going to have the Branton A's. And this was sort of a surprise to me that Branton decided to not protect any players. Uh, how do you feel about that? Um, well, I, I think there's got to be some player pitch that they're mm -hmm. that they're maybe inviting a, um, the players that want to be there to resign. A, maybe it's a morale booster. Mm -hmm. um, I'm not really sure what to think of that. Yeah, uh, it's pretty a uh, pretty confident move. For um, sure. Yeah, I I read the uh, address given out by Coach Magley after, and uh, he said that in his in his address it was pretty clear he just wanted guys that wanted to be there. And uh, they thought that the organization uh, treated their players fairly, and I'm sure they did. And it uh, should be interesting to see who comes back to that team well, next year. You are going to find out uh, kind of who your friends are, right? Mm -hmm. that way. So, For sure. Um, it's a bit risky, uh, I think. But if, if players are dedicated to, uh, to their city, to their place, to that coach, that organization, that system, they'll come back. So. Yeah. One guy I will say will most likely be back with the Brampton A's is Kevin Francis. He is a Brampton native, and uh, he provided a lot of stability for uh, for that team this year at the four or five spot. Wherever they really needed him, he's a really good defender and uh, a quality scorer. Again, they have uh, Elvis Zabis, uh, who was a great uh, great swingman, Le yeah. nice little left-hander, yeah. can pull up that quick uh, shot real quick. Uh, Cavell Johnson was a great power in the uh, post for for Brampton this year and uh, I could go on and on so it should be interesting to see how Brampton does you you know those guys are going to be communicating yeah. amongst each other as well so I think going in they'll probably the core group will have spoken to one another and probably mm -hmm. you know look for some unity and say okay we're going to do this together so mm -hmm. and finally oh no we have two more sorry huh? just keep going keep talking we'll uh we'll head Kind of it seemed that, that the Central Division was really, really, really strong. And a big, a big reason was that from the home team, Windsor Express. Uh, the Windsor Express protect Darren Duncan, Stefan Bonneau, Quinnell Brown, Chris Commons, Kevin Loisel, and George Good. And that's as good as six in the NBL as you'll ever see, Mitch. Yeah, um, that group, that core group, uh, and, you know, it's early. Uh, maybe jump the gun a little bit here to talk uh, dynasty, but really and truthfully like what an what an awesome core group of players Darren Duncan uh, I can't say enough about that guy I, I truly believe he's the best pure point guard in that league mm -hmm. um, his partner in the backcourt you know pistols blazing Stefan Bonneau, Uh, you know those guys delivered in the playoffs as well uh, oh. so I mean when you when you're starting with that backcourt um, you're already ahead, a step ahead of the game. Yeah, those two players are amazing. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, Chris Commons. Uh, you know, there were times in the regular season. Not that I, I didn't think he was the captain or shouldn't be the captain. I just wondered why. And uh, in the playoffs, I got to see his leadership, and that piece really uh, came came forward, and it truly signified his uh, the importance to uh, to his play. Um, so I, I can see, obviously, Chris Commons being down there. We got to see his uh, his play in the post in the, mm -hmm. in the playoffs. Yeah. Uh, and then his ability to kind of stretch the floor with the outside shot. Um, George Good was a guy that really uh, stepped his game up in the playoffs. We, we got to see some things added to his toolbox. Mm -hmm. He was shooting threes and doing all kinds of crazy stuff uh, in the postseason. He came late, uh, you From know, had to find yeah. his spot. He came in off the bench. That guy could start. Anywhere. 
so uh, he, he they got really lucky with him, mm -hmm. and I'm really glad they brought, brought him back. And Kevin Loisel played awesome in the playoffs. Exactly. He really did. He, he showed up. Um, I think the, uh, the, the most surprising piece here was DeAndre Thomas. Now, are there, are there, are there other things at work here? Are there, is there something going on I don't know about? Uh, just looking at it on paper, I, I take DeAndre Thomas, uh, if he's willing, uh, you know, probably just behind Duncan and Beno. Mm -hmm. uh, so I'm, I'm a little bit disappointed. I hope he's back. I don't know what's going on. That guy, uh, that guy I can't say enough about that guy. He's an amazing player that, that, that truly changes uh, changes what's going on on the floor. Yeah, uh, you said it all right there. He changes a lot for for other team defenses, and uh, his services might be sought out by other leagues. That's my, why he might be uh, on, not on the protected list. But, uh, hey, if he's not back, we're wishing the best luck. If he's for back, sure, I'm going to be sure. really excited that he's yeah. back. The, the show so. must go on with or without him. Uh, I'm just grateful to have watched him play and, and to fed off that energy on, on both ends of the mm -hmm. floor. Uh, he's, a, he's a special guy, and it was a lot of fun to uh, watch him win the championship last year. Yep, and we're hoping they can uh, make another run at it next year. Uh, our final protected list is going to be by the Ottawa Skyhawks, the newest franchise of the NBL Canada last year. Uh, had a little bit of difficulty uh, finding a home, essentially, in Ottawa. Uh, they made the playoffs. They lost in the play-in game. They had over 20, uh, 20 wins in the regular season, which was very good. They uh, came on really late, and they uh, they were definitely a thorn in London's side during the regular season. And uh, they protect Ryan Anderson, who is a great shooter. Justin Tubbs, For a great sure. athlete, a uh, great athlete who can go off the bounce, finish anything with a hard flush. Jarese Crouch, who is a matchup problem for a lot of people. Fred Sturdivant, solid guy in the number three, four spot. Mike Rose, a hustle. Uh, a hustle demon, I, I'll call it. He's just all heart and hustle. Uh, and Terrell Baines, who is a multifaceted player for them as well. So, solid group coming out of Ottawa, and uh, a lot of solid players coming out of the National Basketball Canada uh, being protected. So, it should be interesting to see. And you never know, uh, we're going to see new, new players come in next year. Uh, exactly. That, that we've never heard of, or, uh, you know, that are coming from other places. So, it's an exciting time watching these teams uh, essentially protect and then rebuild uh we're having a, a bit of an open tryout here in yeah. winter uh shortly so. shortly yes very very soon uh i'll have to get coach bill jones and dartis uh willis on the show soon so we can talk about a little bit more about the their off-season plans uh heading into off-season plans we're going to talk about the nbl draft lottery that happened this past week yeah, strange, uh, brew. strange brew to say the least um Cleveland Cavaliers ended up with the first overall pick. They had a 1.7% 1 1 chance of getting the lottery pick, and uh, them getting it has caused a little bit of a stir, Mitch. Certainly, uh, and for good reason. Uh, I'm, not a, I'm, I'm not a big conspiracy theorist guy, mm -hmm. and I'm not going to really get into that uh, intensely, but you know, you look at the, uh, the, the pre-draft with, with, say, Boston and L.A., mm -hmm. uh, they were looking at, you know, uh, a Parker and Wiggins type thing, and, yep. and they end up on the backside of ten, and sort of all the franchises that are struggling in order uh, start from one on, and you know this is a really deep draft. It is, um, so it, it's quite shocking that Cleveland ended up uh, again with the first round pick. So third first overall pick in the last four years. Yeah, and I think four and six or something crazy, and and then the the, the possibility of LeBron James returning to Cleveland yes. uh, next year. Now they're mm -hmm. looking at Kyrie, uh, Tristan Thompson, a first-round pick. Anthony uh, Bennett. Anthony Bennett. So uh, mm -hmm. I don't really know what to say. I just feel bad for the, for the Milwaukee Bucks because they just had an awful season, and they're not getting – well, they're going to be in the number two spot, same with the 76ers. They're going to get good players at those spots. But you could really use the number one pick if you're struggling, just like Milwaukee did. Uh, yes, but this this draft class is very deep, mm -hmm. and I think from from one to three or one to four, you're going to get an impact player um, of potential All Star caliber. So uh, I don't think it's it's as sad for Milwaukee as it is for the the teams. Like I said, like you know, Boston and LA have always been strong. Yes, you look at you know they could use a high pick building, though, but where they where they were. Uh, predicted to go was nowhere near. Now we know that when you're when you're dealing with a lottery, anything can happen. Yes, uh, we didn't 
<clears throat> we didn't know going in, so uh, it's just the way things ended up. Um, mm -hmm. Cleveland, first pick again. Congratulations to them. Congratulations to their management. A uh, local team that was affected by the draft tremendously was the Detroit Pistons. Uh, they're just around, uh, just an hour outside the border uh, for us. By getting out of the top eight, uh, they ended up with the number nine pick. They had to give up their first rounder to the Charlotte Hornets, who are definitely going to be happy that they got that. Uh, but that's part of the Corey Maggette trade that happened a couple years ago. They knew either way that they were going to lose a first round pick, whether it's going to be this year or next year. But uh, not having a first-round pick is definitely something Stan Van Gundy is probably kicking himself about. I think they have uh, they have a group to work with, though. That team in particular has some roster problems. They needed somebody to come in and, and do an overhaul and take a good look. I like Brandon Jennings. Is he a real pure point guard? Is he more of a combo guard? He's a little erratic with the ball. He can certainly score. But then you've got... This, these monstrous players on the front court with Monroe, Drummond, and Josh Smith, and then you're kind of shallow in the back end. Yes. So they need probably to make a trade, and they have some some really good pieces to do so. Like you said, uh, you know, losing losing that high pick uh, will definitely have an impact. But but they've got it. They've got something to work with, and and I like Van Gundy. I think he's an I awesome do too. coach. So I think that organization with Dumar stepping out. Uh, Van Gundy coming in, uh, a decent group of players, and, and Andre Drummond, who is awesome. Great. They're in a good spot going forward. They're not the Milwaukee Bucks right now. True. You know what I mean? So that piece for the Pistons I like. <clears throat> mm -hmm. Yeah, uh, I completely agree. They've got a solid, if they really want, they could have a solid starting five. And I believe Stan Van Gundy is going to make the right moves. He's got a five-year contract. And I hope to see the uh, brand of basketball that made them so famous in the late 80s, early 90s, and of course in the uh, 2000, early 2000 era as well. So best of luck to the Detroit Pistons. Uh, I'm not going to talk about the Toronto Raptors today because they did so well. So we're going to save that for another episode. But what we are going to talk about right now is the NBA Conference Finals, something that's very close to your heart, obviously, as the uh, Thunder logo is on Wipe away the chest. tears real quick here. <sighs> you want to talk about East or West first? Uh, let's talk about East first. Okay, the Eastern Conference. Uh, we've got. Well, I'll just take the, let you take it away. Eastern we got, Conference. We finals. got the Heat and the Pacers. Yeah, uh, a game of peace. They play tonight. Um, Paul George concussion. Uh, I, I haven't got the status on if he's playing. Mm -hmm. uh, this is a really big game. Mm -hmm. um, the the Pacers came out and shredded the Heat defense. They really showed that they can win this series. Absolutely, it's possible. Roy Hibbert has really woken up, and Lance Stevenson's playing awesome basketball. Mm -hmm. Those are really the two X factors, in my opinion. Mm -hmm. um, you know, it's it for Indiana. It's just consistency, staying aggressive, and converting, taking high percentage mm -hmm. shots. So if Paul George uh, isn't in the lineup tonight, it's going to be a tough go yeah. for the Pacers. Um, I don't think the Heat are as good as they were two years ago. I don't think they were as good as they were last year. They're obviously still an excellent team as Absolutely. much as I hate them. Yes. Uh, they're still an excellent team, and, and they're not here by accident. Yeah. Um, these are kind of the two teams that everybody predicted. Actually, yeah. all four of these teams are the teams that at the beginning everybody predicted, and then teams win a game. You know, someone on Golden State will make some noise or yep. something like that, and people will be like, oh, you know, it's, it's going to be an upset. But we're right back to where we thought we would be. Yeah. This is going to be a real competitive, awesome series. Yeah, I'm really looking forward to seeing how Game 3 pardon me, goes tonight uh, in Miami. So it should be, uh, should be loud in, uh, at American Airlines arena uh, very good job by the Pacers to win game one though and kind of put the pressure on the heat in my opinion uh, I really think that in it, this series could go either way but without Paul George Indiana is going to struggle a little bit str scoring the ball uh, but hopefully their secondary scorers can can step up Lance Stevenson can take over a game when he wants to uh, his intensity is great. Roy Hibbert, when he puts his big boy pants on, can be a dominant force, and he plays really well against Miami yeah. historically. So we'll see how that goes. Uh, I've said enough. We can. Uh, <laughs> I've said enough. We can go into the Western Conference now. We can. Uh, so obviously the the Thunder are getting spanked. Uh, they're without Serge Ibaka. Last year, they were without Westbrook. They're losing a, a gigantic piece, and you've seen the Spurs score over 60 points in the pain in the first game. They, they're just, they, you know, their front court cannot handle uh, San Antonio right now. Collison, uh, 
and Adams uh, can't find the offensive production. That they're missing missing all of that in the front court. So you got Westbrook and Durant uh, struggling. They're trying to put the team on their back, and and San Antonio is just firing at all cylinders. They've been the best team in basketball in the last ten years. Absolutely, and they're doing everything right. Yep, absolutely. Uh, quick before we go, who are your predictions to make the finals? Uh, as sad as, uh, sad as it is, I think uh, my Thunder are going uh, home no. this round. I don't think that they're going to beat San Antonio. I think it's going to be San Antonio, and I think it is going to be Miami, and I'm picking the Spurs to win the NBA championship. I would really like to see the Spurs uh, uh, win another championship, especially with those three guys as well. Uh, couldn't agree with you more on those picks. I'm sad to say that the Oklahoma Thunder are the underdogs in the Western Conference Series, and it should be interesting to see how it goes in the East. So, ah. Uh, We've said it all. All the 10 guys have to uh, say it on the court as well. So that is going to be all. We filled up every single second of our 30-minute segment this, uh, this week. I'd like to thank Mitchell Kobe K for being – Thank you for having me. – shedding some light on, uh, on things across the NBL Canada, the pre protected list, the NBA drafts, and, of course, the NBA conference finals. For, from everyone here at the downtown Windsor Business Accelerator offices, I'm Brett Hedges, uh, signing off on XEAYZ.TV. Make sure to subscribe to our YouTube channel, Knoxstrom1, and make sure to uh, follow us all on Twitter. Thank you very much, and uh, take care. Have a nice one.